60 Minutes Rewind. Just a few months ago, most people had never heard of a website called WikiLeaks or of its mysterious and eccentric founder, Julian Assange. But in that short period of time, both have managed to rattle the worlds of journalism, diplomacy, and national security. WikiLeaks, which solicits and publishes secrets and suppress material from whistleblowers around the world, has been under cyber attack from governments that want to shut it down. And Assange is currently under legal attack from the U.S. government, which would like to charge him with espionage for publishing volumes of classified material from the Pentagon and the State Department. We spent two days with him in Britain, where he is under house arrest while fighting extradition to Sweden for questioning in two sexual assault cases, which he's called part of a smear campaign against him. In his most extensive television interview to date, Assange talked to us about his work, his vision, and the prospect of facing criminal charges in the United States. In WikiLeaks' case, it was the idea to aggregate state and corporate secrets by setting up an online electronic drop box where whistleblowers around the world could anonymously upload sensitive and suppressed information. The secrets are stored on servers around the world beyond the reach of governments or law enforcement, then released worldwide on the internet. The US does not have the technology to take the site down. Because? Just the, just the way, the, way our technology is constructed, the way the internet is constructed, um, it is, it's quite hard to stop things reappearing. Um, so we've, we've had attacks on particular domain names, little pieces of infrastructure uh, knocked out. But we now have some 2,000 fully independent in every way websites where we are publishing around the world. We are um, subverting illegitimate authority. The question is whether the authority is legitimate or whether it is illegitimate. Do you consider the U.S. State Department a legitimate authority? It's legitimate insofar as its actions are legitimate. It has actions that are not legitimate. And you've gone after the ones that you think are illegitimate? We don't go after. Uh, that's a, a bit of a misconception. We don't go after a particular country. We don't go after a particular organisation or group. Um, we just stick to our promise of publishing material that is likely uh, to have uh, a significant impact. There's a perception on the part of some people who believe that your agenda right now is anti-American. Not at all. In fact, our founding values are those of uh, the US Revolution. They are those of people like Jefferson and Madison. And uh, we have a number of Americans in our organization. If you're a whistleblower and you have material that is important, we will accept it, we will defend you, and we will publish it. You can't turn away material simply because it comes from the United States. You played outside the rules. Oh, uh, you are, you've got played outside the United States' rules. No. We've actually played inside the rules. We didn't go out to get, get the material. Um, we operated just like any US publisher operates. So we didn't play outside the rules. We play inside the rules. There is a special set of rules in the United States for disclosing classified information. There is. There's a special, Long standing. There's, there's a special set of rules for uh, soldiers, uh, for members of the State Department uh, who are disclosing classified information. There's not a special set of rules for publishers uh, who disclose classified information. There is the First Amendment. It covers the case. Uh, and there's been uh, no precedent that I'm aware of in the past uh, 50 years of prosecuting a publisher for espionage. It is, it is just not done. Those are the rules. You do not do it. Any prosecution of Assange will be fraught with problems because WikiLeaks wasn't alone in publishing the classified material. The New York Times also published some of it. If the government were to try and prosecute WikiLeaks and not the Times, it would likely need to prove that Assange was actively involved in a conspiracy to illegally obtain the documents. If we're talking about creating threats to small publishers to stop them publishing, the US has lost its way. It has abrogated its founding traditions. It has thrown the First Amendment in the bin because publishers must be free to publish. The shoestring operation that created all the havoc has no permanent offices and is headquartered wherever Assange happens to be. 
WikiLeaks is a small non-profit organization with a handful of employees, a secret cadre of international programmers, and a legion of worldwide volunteers. For somebody who abhors secrets, you run a pretty secret organization. That's not true. What we want is transparent government, not transparent people. We are an organization who one of our, our primary goals is to keep certain things secret, to keep the identities of sources secret. Secrecy is an inherent part uh, of our operation. The State Department would make the same argument. They have doing very sensitive work that they're trying to make peace and negotiate situations around the world very delicately. It's important that they do this in secrecy. What's the difference? And we don't say that the State Department should have no secrets. That's not what we say. Rather, we say that if there are people in the State Department who say that there is some abuse going on and there's not a proper mechanism for internal accountability um, and external accountability, they must have a conduit to get that out to the public. And we are the conduit. There is an element of the press, most of the mainstream press, nobody wants to see you prosecuted because it could affect the way that they do their business. But there's also a feeling within the community that you're not one of them, um, that, you, that you play a different game. We do play a different game, uh, and I hope we're a new way. The point that they're making, I think, is that you're not a, you're, 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 you're a publisher, but you're also an activist. And people think that what you're trying yeah. to do is to um, we'll, sabotage the workings of government. No, we're not that type of activists. We are free press activists. It's not about saving the whales. It's about giving people the information they need to support whaling or not support whaling. Why? That is the raw ingredients that is needed to make a just and civil society. And without that, you're just sailing in the dark. You enjoy stirring things up. Well, when, when you see abusive organisations uh, suffer the consequences, as a result of their abuse, and you see victims elevated. Uh, it's, yes, that's a very pleasurable uh, activity to be involved in. I mean, you see yourself as a check on the power of the United States and other big countries in the world, and in the process of doing that, you have now become powerful yourself. Who is the check on you? It is our sources who choose to provide us with information or not, depending on how they see our actions. It is our donors who choose to give us money or not. This organisation cannot survive for more than a few months without the ongoing support of the public.